Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new episode of Ableist Manifestations podcast. Today, I have a very special guest for you all, who I've been looking forward to having on the podcast for quite some time. The guest which I am going to bring to the podcast for you today is none other than Alvaro Leo. He is known as the permanent live bass player of Watain, who I'm sure probably most of the listeners of this podcast are familiar with. Uh, he's been playing with them uh, live for, I think, five, yeah, I believe five out of seven studio album cycles which they have had so uh, pretty much the majority of their uh, touring experience uh, he's been with them and uh, he's also a member of uh, halpen which is a very spiritual uh, tribal uh, black metal band uh, featuring uh, other members from chile uh, obviously as well as himself and uh, he's also played in execrator Undercroft, uh, and he's also got a project called Coco Diamond. I mean, you know, he's uh, he, he's got a lot of work uh, that uh, speaks for itself, really. So there's probably not even much of an introduction needed here. But uh, having said that, it's my absolute honor and privilege to uh, have him on the show, and uh, we had a we had a great conversation actually. And um, yeah, it's always a risk doing these kind of things uh, during the Mercury retrograde. Uh, I don't know if any of you uh, would be familiar with that, but uh, yeah, we still pulled through in the end, and uh, and it turned out to be a great episode, and uh, he's also the first uh, fellow Scorpio to ha- be featured on Ableist Manifestations, so yeah, yeah we dug deep on this one, and uh, I hope that you guys will enjoy the episode. Uh, and of course, uh, Watain are currently touring Europe uh, as a part of the Chariots of Fire, uh, tour package which features, uh, of course, Watain headlining, and then you've got a Bath, Tribulation, and Bolzer. It's a, it's a crazy good lineup. So uh, if you're coming to your town, then you cannot miss this. And uh, I will be at the London show myself on the 30th of September. So don't fucking miss out, and be sure to support these uh, packages when they're on the road. And uh, this is, of course, the first time Watain uh, have done a full-on tour since uh, December 2019. So Alvaro and I spoke about that, and uh, yeah, so coming shortly will be that. As always, thank you all for uh, supporting Iblis Manifestations, the podcast, and for listening in, and for tuning in, and giving us your time. I I hope that uh, you guys will enjoy this one as well. Um, you know, the feedback has been great to the uh, last few episodes, and uh, I am very fucking excited for you guys to be uh, listening to this one. So yeah, I'm going to cut straight to the chase and uh, cut the bullshit. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome Mr. Alvaro Leo Sepulveda to Iblis Manifestations. Mr. Alvaro Leo, the Chilean war beast. Fucking <laughs> welcome to Iblis Manifestations, man. Finally. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to see you again, my my brother. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, it's uh, it's a real pleasure to have you on here. Uh, I know I've, I've been looking forward to this one for the longest time. Actually, when I first originally started the podcast, I was thinking that you were one of the first people I wanted to talk to. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for yeah. that. Oh, absolutely. Not just because of obviously uh, the bands that you're involved with, but just yourself and your history as a human being, I think is, is fascinating. I, I think you've got Thanks. a lot to share, to be honest. So Thanks. I'm looking cool. in- yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to digging into that. But first cool. of all, uh, how are you feeling? I mean, uh, how does it feel to be back playing live? Well, well, excellent. I mean, it's a bit uh, still, it's a bit uh, strange or, or kind of weird 
this uh, we start with some uh, festivals summer festivals just to like uh, come back to the to the normal uh, way of rock and roll man and uh, this uh, give us like a lot of anxiety to like uh, kick the tour kick the road again and uh, this will happen now in two days we just leave for the european tour this weekend we did the last uh, summer festival in poland it was great i mean i don't know it's like over emotions every time after all this long break man and and of course for us was after a new album and everything and things was uh, uncertain until the end i mean but it's good. Everything is in time for us. We are not uh, hesitated too much to like all these plagues and, and, and pandemic shit. But uh, now things start to work as is planned. And uh, now we just jump in our first European tour for this, uh, for this new album. That's fantastic, man. I mean, it must be exciting. And the thing is as well, I mean, uh, obviously, I've followed the band quite closely for many years now. And one of the things that I've noticed, uh, especially in the recent times, is that there seems to be constantly some kind of obstacle on the way. Yeah, yeah ab absolutely. And it's yeah. always, it's always. I know. Yeah, I, I suppose so. But I think just purely on the touring front, I mean, this is really going to be the first proper tour for you because obviously you were meant to do the USA right. one. But I mean, uh, this tour in US, we couldn't do it for, yeah. I mean, security reasons. But this is the thing that I was going to mention is that for yourself personally, this must be um, an, an even longer wait, I would feel, because Absolutely. The, the very last tour that you performed was obviously, I think that was December 2019. And right. this tour... Um, Obviously, that was the first time that uh, the issues uh, came up exactly. with Pele, where he was denied exactly. entry. And exactly. then for yourself, uh, obviously, that was very unfortunate. And, uh, you know, there's, there's everything that's attached to that. But just purely yourself personally, you then had to fill in on guitars, which I can imagine. Right. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. also was like kind of a last moment thing. I mean, mm. we did it in the past kind of that and uh, we thought we will it, ne <laughs> it never happen again but it happened i mean and nothing nothing to do we just like switch instruments eric took the bass and sing and i took Pele's guitar and we did the whole tour with morbid angel i mean and that was the last one and then after that was was all this uh, bullshit from us and i don't know how and when this will end i mean it's mm -hmm. nothing much to do with these guys you know yeah, I, and unfortunately, that's just the way it is with uh, I mean, the States. only thing who have to prime here is the art, is the like uh, artistic expression we are doing. The rest is just bullshit from them. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, I've, I've spoken to Seth uh, before right. about this as well, and I know he had his issues with the US. Right, he also, everybody have been going through these yeah. issues in this band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know it's his birthday today as well. Uh, yeah, I yeah. I talked so, to him a bit. And uh, yeah? yeah, right, okay. right. Yeah, Great so, guy. An yeah, 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 absolutely, man. Absolutely. But um, the, the thing that I was trying to get to was that um, obviously when you're preparing for a tour, you want to go and play the instrument that you want to play. So when it ends up, I mean, you are prepared yeah, for that. <laughs> exactly. But when it, when then you find yourself in a situation where you have to play guitar and it's not exactly the thing that you've prepared for. So I it mean, maybe it feels a bit restricting, I would imagine. Uh, I mean, you seem quite frustrated. I, by the I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, restricting. Yeah, I don't know if it's restricted the word no. or no frustrating. No, 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 absolutely. It's completely other other uh, chapter of the <laughs> of the same reading. Okay. I mean, it's like you need to like switch your head, your body, your spiritual movements, and and all the energies and uh, focus and fulfill what what is your spot in that moment. And we are all prepared for that. That's absolutely fair enough, man. The only reason why I say that is because uh, I think. I think you got a bit excited and smashed the guitar on the last show. So. <laughs> there was a moment of excitement, yes, but uh, don't mention that much to Pele. <laughs> no, <laughs> I will not. But that was the reason why. Good way saying, to but, end uh, this round. Yeah, the reason why I mentioned that is I would. I mean, at least I'm making presumptions here, but 
I would think that when you finish that tour, then you might think to yourself, okay, now I'm looking forward to the next one where I get to do things right. the Absolutely. old way, the, the way Absolutely. that I'm meant to, right? I mean, yes, yes, 100% that you finish there, like after the the guitar is smashed, <laughs> you just like want to take your bass and go on the next tour. Right? That's it. Yeah. But obviously the thing that happened was that after that, it was the pandemic. So really the yeah. last tour that the band did wasn't right. even really right. the full form of the band in the way that it's meant to be. I right? can, yeah, yeah, I can see that for Batain in that, that uh, that circumstances just didn't affect really much our plans because our plans was like focusing the album and mm -hmm. start to set the the mind and and the time for a studio and everything. I mean, and it came this pandemic thing and and it was kind of for us was the standby time anyway. But then the mm -hmm. thing get longer and prolonger and 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 all this chaos around the world about the, the plague and thing and cancellations and uh, pull off tours, pull off festivals, move festival for the next year. The next year you didn't knew if will happen, no happen. And uh, nobody knew what will happen. Really. We were in a kind of like uncertain spot somehow, but uh, time runs and things start to came up again as kind of normal and people probably is more enthusiastic and, and more like uh, wishing for concerts and more like uh, more hard uh, music <laughs> around the stage and uh, it looked like that I mean every since pandemic shut down or 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 calm down a bit uh, all the concerts have been kind of uh, good festivals uh, good success for many bands also who are like uh, preparing material and uh, all this coming back I've been helping people is a bit more as i see i don't know i'm seeing from outside but i i notice them people is more like uh, is active more active more willing to go to shows and uh, kind of support small big i don't know i don't know I, I it feels like that then everybody's really enthusiastic for the things go on go on and it's a lot of things going on I'll then kind of okay with that did you have any moments where you thought you might never ever get the chance to play live again? No, really, not really, no. not really. The thing what I was very like concerning and, and, and worried, it was like when we will start to do online shows and this, mm. uh, and that was very against that. I was very against that and I didn't like the idea at all. But with all this ended up in, we did our first show as kind of like, private uh, show in France for the kickoff of uh, Hellfest and and that was weird also because all the people who was there was invited by us was more or less like uh, from the Vatain disciples and some journalists and things like that and that was kind of like a good feeling to start everything yeah, yeah, man, I, I feel I feel gutted. I couldn't come to that one. I had to, it was just way too short notice, you know. Yeah. I tried to move things around and try and make it work, but unfortunately, I couldn't come. But many of my friends did, and uh, they all said that. Yeah, we met killer. we met many of people yeah. who. Yeah, we all know. We all know. We have been in touch for yeah, many yeah. years, and and this was kind of a very strange but good, like very close uh, atmosphere in that in that concert. It yeah. feels then. Then everybody there were uh, were our guests, <laughs> not the mm. not the guys who buy the ticket, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And the thing is, as well, you mentioned that uh, you mentioned that you were against the idea of doing an online show. I mean, for yeah, uh, because because just one reason: start a lot of things, like a lot of like uh, like I don't know, showing uh, like uh, rehearsal rooms start to get cameras like uh, living rooms start to get cameras your uh, bedroom or you have to get cameras and everybody start to sit down in front of the, co the computer and show themselves in the internet i mean this is weird for me i'm man i'm old school motherfucker and this kind of shit like i, no, I don't I, I don't <laughs> i don't really like uh, or understand or really see as a, as the way i mean we are in modern times i mean i'm not against that but uh, it was like suddenly it was kind of a logic pattern that everybody was was doing and i said no this will go to shit because everybody now will work online 
And what happened? People start to build concerts online at the beginning for the restrictions and things and to show everybody. And that opened also another branch of this technology thing, what the people get used with all these two or more years of pandemic. I think people now today get used to have everything online. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Obviously, that's what everyone gravitated towards. That's why you had so many like online orders and things. Yeah. But I think it had its uses. I mean, yeah, obviously, as um, as you've probably seen, uh, we did did one of those online stream shows. Right. But I think it just came right. at the right time. And it. I think it conveyed the right kind of message as well that this is about it's this is just a little sample. This is not the real exactly. thing. Exactly. It all depends yeah. how you take it and how yeah. how to show it. Like and, and the thing is as well, I mean, this, this, there's the elephant in the room. Well, Tain shows aren't just about the oral and the visual. There's a lot more going on there, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. just being present in the room, the sheer energy right. that you feel. But even down to, I mean, I guess this is a very mundane thing of it, but just even down to the smell, that's a very unique uh, part of the experience, I think, for a lot of people. You can't really do that we, on a live we, stream. We can work you? with all our senses. We just yeah. expect float and be the bore in there. I mean, it's a temple of Athene. We it's difficult to have a picture like to to be your I don't know to to build it up something for show it online. This is this is kind of like a weird moment to think or or very like and impossible to handle. I mean it's too new this situation. Maybe for us, maybe Okay, I don't know. I know we are. I think we feel that everything gets back as it was before, and and for us that works very good. I mean, the rest yeah. is like uh, okay. The world is have different corners and different roads. I mean, everybody take the the road they want, and and if it's well done, fucking yeah, it will stay in the in the history or or in the living. I mean, in the in the time we are living, then whatever. But if it's bullshit, it will be a bullshit. Will will be forgotten, and, and and nobody will remember shit. You know? Yeah, man. It's Just like an difference. entertainment thing. This is this is this is kind of as you say before. It's a mundane thing. The only the entertainment part of this, like uh, to be open to everybody, and not everybody get the same impression. Not everybody has the same respect to the the things that the artists are showing you. For that, it's like you. As a as a as an artist, you cannot re really like think much about who or where is like the people who will accept your things. I mean, you need to feel comfortable and you need to express hundred percent what you are doing in 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 your in your field. In your field, every every stage must be turned into your field. Absolutely. I mean, this is such a common thing that comes up on this podcast generally, right. but I think that art, sh that should be the almost only exclusive way to approach performing and creating art. Otherwise, it's just adding uh, nonsense, extra unnecessary things yep. to the traffic, right? It's like traffic. Yeah, That's yeah, right, thing. right. It's like uh, uh, not because everybody's locked down at home, like uh, we have to create a new way to see and listen music i mean this is for the pop culture not for the hard rockers and motherfuckers like us <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like the difference between watching porn and actually having sex right <laughs> hey yeah kind of that man yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it, man. good comparison man. <laughs> yeah yeah well listen man it's um uh, I, I love hearing your approach on that. And obviously, I think everyone pretty much knows by this point uh, what you guys stand by. Uh, and and in the case of yourself, I'm really curious to um, get a little bit more just into your background in general and obviously growing up in Chile, because I know obviously that I, politically and cool. in terms of the society, there's a lot of yeah. turbulence involved there. So I'm just wondering if you could just exactly delve well, a little I, bit more into your uh, initial. I, I grew up in a right. I grew up in a in a yeah in a kind of like a non peaceful environment. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. like a full on like a military dictatorship. I mean, it was like 
everybody has his own political opinion. I'm not really a very political person, but I have my opinions. And it, if, it's, uh, if it sounds political, well, man, ears to hear. I mean, uh, I mean my, my point of view of this situation, what happened in Chile, is it was a completely bullshit. I mean, it was a big manipulation from the, the Uncle Sam, man. And, uh, mm. and the betrayers, I mean, the, all these military parasites who sell the, the, the country to to U.S., bombing and killing your own people, this this is, like, absurd. And this is, like, completely... And they use these uh, political flags as a reason to just do what the fuck they want to, 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 to get to rob the country. And they did it. And through years and years, I mean, you couldn't like uh, go to street because you get kidnapped by the the secret police, and it's like it was a very bad copy of the Nazis' time. <laughs> yeah, very, but a bad copy, like in a Chilean way, like bad, yeah. horrible, bad, like total disgusting, man. No, 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 really political or or extreme factors who, who who change this country in that matter like like the corruption like i don't know like the people stabbing the back of people just because to like i don't know i don't know man it was horrible i mean i personally through my family i i i saw like persecution political persecution and things like that and uh, personally as i never including in any political like uh, group or things. I saw it since I was a kid. The persecution also to our kin, I mean, our metalheads, they, they who were like from the beginning apolitical because the bullshit was happening there is like was something to like really uh, dislike political, uh, mm -hmm. dislike politicians and all this bullshit because it was a full manipulation. And... Uh, and we were, as a metalhead, we were all like kind of the movement was like completely a, a bit of out of political, even if we were against what was happening in the society. We were the, the kind of a dangerous in front of uh, them for that police was on you all the time, wherever you go with no reason. They didn't know what you were. If you were a political activist or if you were a terrorist or you were a fucking hippie with with, with a fucking uh, black t-shirts and long hair, you know, they didn't understood anything. And and we passed many shit, even even uh, tortures like this for nothing, like because they believe you were like a bunch of political guys who are like trying to, and no way. I mean, well, with the time, some some groups start to go with political bands and start to like build concerts under political like uh, support and shit like that like part ties but mm -hmm. uh, i never i never i never went in in that uh, in that friendship with these guys because i i saw it completely non consequent when you when you are see the bullshit what is around, you cannot like go and, 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 and give the hand to a guy because he will build a concert for you. I mean, I mean, this is like, it's the same. You are selling yourself. I mean, this is completely fucked up. And all the 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 scene in Chile, the metal scene when it was growing, was a bit divided by the like high class motherfuckers and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest was the like violent aggressors, but the rest was the one who who went everywhere. Like the people who support at the beginning, the first bands with demos. Everybody, everybody has a like a meeting point on Saturdays outside one one metal uh, like a music store, something like that. And uh, it was people from all Chile. Sometimes they travel to Santiago, and we meet there. We see some faces exchanging fun scenes, exchanging demos. This is how we start on the street, in the street. I mean, this this was the, our shit. We didn't have a... I mean, sometimes with some friends, we just, like, uh, put some money with, uh, among, like, four guys and buy one vinyl, man, motherfucker. We're three days one, three days the other, like... They, or we meet in different places, just everybody brought music, and we just, like, start to, like, copy cassettes, and shit like that, just in the street, like, I try to be hidden because police, if see more than two guys who look like us, they were on, full on, they were, they bring the cars and film motherfuckers. I mean, 
even if you have like some hours like in the de detention in the police stop it was like why it's like no reason and if they were bored they start to like fight with you or mm. or do you do stupid things inside fight between uh, each other or i don't know i mean they they were like fucking assholes but uh and the the very funny part is like uh, it's the political thing didn't change much in Chile, even if people was like acting active a lot in, in trying to change things lately. But uh, I think the fear of like uh, of the TV, television manipulation, all this misinformation, uh, people still show them they are not well educated and in, in politics and. And they show their ignorance in all these like uh, things than uh, than the power people does, and then they just sell the propaganda and they don't do that. I mean, it's a dirty game. Then they are motherfuckers, man. This is a yeah. dirty game. Then you have to stay away. And I understand, man. And I tell you what, Alvaro, you, you, I don't know how much you can imagine this, but this is absolutely it's like a dark nostalgia for myself everything right. every word that you are saying i can't you know? imagine and, i can't imagine we and, talk about this years ago yeah yeah we did that's right that's right, right. and uh, i'm glad you remember right. it and i think it's um there is definitely something to that that uh i think just the just the sheer resistance and the sense of community that you can find between yourself and the very few people around you that actually give a shit about just freedom of expression, just playing metal because that's what you want to do, even if it puts your life in fucking danger, then exactly. so be it. And exactly. I think there, there's something exactly. extremely special to that. And I think it respects this art form in the way uh, it, it, it treats it in the way that, it, that, that, it's, uh, that it's meant to be, I feel, because there's something... Yeah, yeah, I think there's something it's you, there. It's, it's factors, it's factors who also build you uh, and give you like uh, the 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 tools to, to express your art, not not in a really peaceful way, but uh, is very fulfill the music we love, you know, mm -hmm. to express with words your your courage, your your hunger, your your angriness to to this kind of like parasite to this kind of like political shit who try to manipulate people who is easy super manipulative i mean the people the the global mass is easier super easy to manipulate with this lies propaganda and commercials then if you know that you need to walk your own path and your own path doesn't have to have much of these guys you know <laughs> this is what i've been learning through all these years even if uh, my music i've never been or i never put myself as a creative person to to encourage politics i i always have my philosophy my spiritual thoughts my spiritual beliefs is always connected with my music and then it's, it's as i said i walk in a in another path i mean i can be concerned about politics and i can be concerned and supportive to people who is like against this uh, the the power of the big hands who manipulate go or govern uh, the countries in a like just to steal the capital the money they don't they don't want the people to go up and, and be rich because this will be enemies for them they are the rich motherfuckers they don't they will not lose the teeth you know <laughs> they will hang the teeth until the teeth is dead man. absolutely man fucking it's it's all a game you know it's a trap it is it's a game like... it's a very dirty game and and you really get pissed off when you see them the mass of people still continue following and believing in these idiots sponsored by <laughs> pfizer huh <laughs> <laughs> kind of that you see yes it's all a big a big like a uh, dirt who is like running and running uh, and these are the guys who have the dirty hands i mean we look dirty but <laughs> we are not that dirty <laughs> <laughs> now i understand what you're saying man but you're absolutely right in that you know and there's uh i think that's the beauty of metal is that the reward of being a metalhead yeah. 
um, I think is more in the liberation that you feel rather than anything Absolutely. monetary it, or this materialistic. Is a, this is a this is a great word. It's the liberation of your own self. Uh, it's all this like hard way you have into this uh, extreme music. You need to be an extreme being, human being. You need to know how to transform into emotions. You are you are showing art. You're 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 putting feelings there on stage, and it's your own philosophy. Absolutely, and, and this universe is, is is far too bigger than that to, to just focus on who's in the, supposedly in charge of this small, tiny planet of dirt. Really, right? I, I think... Yeah, right. And for example, I remember when I was young, uh, I was like a leading more by aggression. Than, mm -hmm. uh, than, than thoughts and, 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 and the, the, the compact, a solid building of things. So it was more like, it's like violent things than you want to project in your music. I mean, this, is, this was kind of the base of all this South American old wave of, uh, of hard rock. It's like uh, death metal, thrash, all the ways. It's like, pe and people still has this in the blood and still try to carry this kind of savagery, this kind of like a wild, uh, free spirit, man. And this is what I still like, really, really love from South America. Yeah, and you can see that like whenever you guys go and play there, the response, uh, I yeah. mean, every Chile show uh, seems to have <laughs> just been completely crazy. Yeah. 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 There are a bunch of maniacs, man. <laughs> I mean, actually, <laughs> we're, you know we're not a really, We are not a really big, big country in population, but uh, if you see the metalheads, fuck, they're wild, man. <laughs> I, can, I can see that, man. I mean, uh, I was actually going to ask you about this as well, uh, funnily yeah. enough, is... When you guys go over there, uh, obviously Votain a big name as it is, but then you yourself, it seems to me that a lot of people there, like anywhere in South America, but obviously Chile included, they're obviously aware of your uh, background, I feel. And it seems that uh, like when you see like a lot of... Um, a lot I of believe. Videos, <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of like videos and things like that, when you're watching them, there seems to be that Thing. I mean, I think there's like a video of you, I think from, I'm going to say Chile, maybe in 2006 or seven. I think it was when you first joined the band. And with uh, Vatain. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think... We did. We did to Southern. Uh, I, I joined Vatain. The first tour was in 2007 for me. 2007. I'm wondering maybe if it's, if it's the same year then, but I think there's some, I, I remember seeing some footage of you. Yeah. Just taking over the mic just to speak yeah. uh, in, yeah, this, in a local uh, this language. Was, this was my first uh, going to Chile. I'm the first going to Chile for Watain also. This was our right. first show. We were supporting uh, uh, Seydus and Obituary. That's right. Yes, yeah. that's the one. Uh, obviously, I, I wasn't there, but I've, I've looked into it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we were around very cool. For us, was like great first yeah. uh, approach to South America. And uh, yeah, yeah, for me, it was also like uh, surprising because I've been a lot. It, it was for me a long time out of my country. I had no much communication in the first years. I, I was with Undercroft here. Then we have a break with Undercroft. And then I start full on with Vatain. And uh, my first going back to Chile was nearly like after eight years or something like that. And uh, right, and uh, I was like all over the place. I mean, I was like full on. I, I, I this was like a kind of like emotive thing or, or emotional thing that I cannot get out of my cannot get out of my head. This I will remember forever, man. It, okay, it was a short show, but I think it was the first entering like first show into Vatain to like uh, all the people who also like uh, I knew many or or they knew me about my past bands I started in like a I can I say like my professionally serious in 1991 I think with Execrator right with Execrator time, right yeah. right this was my first like kind of like a serious band we built and from scratch we we all came from different backgrounds. I mean, three of the members came from a band called the Hellfire, mm -hmm. also from the late eighties, and uh, then we 
we built up Exegrator, we did a demo with our pocket money, like the mother of the singer was like, <laughs> kind of putting like <laughs> well, nearly the whole recording. We record the whole demo in one day in the studio, like uh, this, like you, the sound guy give us a good price. We just go there and, and then we take the master, send to do tapes here, go to the printing and cut the papers, like everything low cost. But then on Saturday, we went to the, this uh, metal store, then everybody, every metal head should met. And there it was the way to sell your demo tapes or exchange with other bands. And then was the same, then, then you get invited to another concert or, or there uh, spontaneously, we just talk with all the guys and organize a concert for the next weekend. And the, the, we just spread by voice there, like, okay, next weekend, concert there. And all the motherfuckers and more arrived. Mm -hmm. That's and amazing, this man. Was, yeah, yeah, this was the way that then we were like kind of, the, the people really, the, the, first, the first and second wave of metalheads there, I think they want to like build the thing because we have a very, a lot of information from Brazil. And Brazil also has a very solid, uh, metalhead like uh, first and second camade of uh, of metalheads they were like solid and, and there's much more people and we get more information was like also from Argentina was a lot of like uh, uh, this vertigo I remember all the metallic albums or or like uh, Iron Maiden albums everything uh, translated in Spanish I mean <laughs> that was, that was oh, weird okay. now the collection is and are, are crazy looking for these kind of things sure I can imagine I mean you know you mentioned about doing the tapes yourself and actually going there in person and doing everything by hand you know I feel like yeah. that whole physical thing is an element that's sometimes really missing from metal because I feel like when you're doing that when you're so passionate about something and you're doing uh -huh. hand stuff or even handwritten exactly. letters obviously you and I exactly. we've exchanged written uh, right. pieces right. before like physical ones and right. that's right. great because I, mean, I feel like you're it, directing your energy into that which somehow gives it life in a, yeah. in a way that you just can't do if you just put a song on Spotify and then it's suddenly yeah. there. You know what I mean? Now, now this is the it? different. Now, now it's everything uh, automatic. I mean, instant. Mm -hmm. I mean, and people is like used to that and people get comfortable with that. Everybody forget about the letter exchange or trade things by post, you know? Now it's a link. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's but right. But still, still, sometimes it's kind of I don't I don't call it like nostalgic or romantic. I just call it like part of the thing. I mean, to write yeah. a letter. Sometimes I write a letter to to important persons just because ah, I wanted to write a letter. And if he doesn't get the letter, then I can write by chat what I want to say. But it's I think it's a it's a precious thing when you receive a letter written by hand and you can. It's more than like a keyboard and, and a screen. I think it's because there's, a, I mean, first of all, 100%, I couldn't agree with you more on that. But I think there's, there's something, uh, I, I like to think there's almost something scientific to it as well, besides just the sentimental value, which I would like to know more about. But yeah. I feel like just the fact that you have something in front of you and you know that with our eyes, right. our eyes are powerful tools. So the yeah. fact that you are looking at something and you're looking at it and directing your intentions at it whilst writing something, mm -hmm. and it's like when you send a letter, it's not just what's written there, but it's that entire no, no, no. energy and intent yeah. that gets attached yeah. to that piece of and, paper. And, uh, and we, we, as we work in our spiritual ways, it's also, it's also like a magic uh, to see your writings. It's, it's kind of like... A, it's kind of a other message also behind all the words you are written there. It's like, as you said, it's a lot of energy, personal energy, plasm there on the paper, on the ink. You know, it's it's different feeling for me, or maybe I'm too old school to think. <laughs> maybe if I if you ask a guy who have like a 25 years old, he doesn't even care to write a letter. But uh, he said, "Why I have what's up?" or kind of that. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think it's it's one of them things. It's a, it's a big part of um, what's always worked for us. And the fact that 
it's a physical piece a physical piece yep. you can always yeah. keep it messages yeah. they always get deleted or there's always Absolutely. more of them but something physical yep. will stay with you forever i have like a collection i i personally i still i'm still carrying and saving some letters yeah from different persons then i've been having mm. contact some I've, i've been like wonderful like like uh, written and and get with as you say with a lot of emotions and energy in there and i just carry around with years maybe i don't read it again but i know then it is there <laughs> absolutely yeah stuff it's a stuff powerful matters. it's a powerful yeah. thing 100 percent um you know going back to the uh, thing with chile the, the thing that i was actually going to ask you about was obviously uh going back home or or just to to south yep. america in general and when you're playing and obviously yep. you yourself know very well the stigma that is attached to simply just being a metalhead especially from back in the day from your upbringing and this is something that right. obviously i personally relate to because it's the same over in iran where there's this exactly. whole thing attached to it and it's you versus yeah. the entire society exactly. how how does it feel for you now going back there because obviously i think you guys are playing south america in like november this year right yep we have so a latin do, america tour killer how does it feel for you when you go there to be playing but also know that you have this position that uh, you're with a successful band but it also just happens to be the most inverted like <laughs> counterculture the kind of situation yeah. possible yeah. and you get to have this kind of feedback is there any better fuck you to <laughs> that place then you going over there and doing that no no really i think this is the best fuck you and then then could happen to me and it's like i'm full of pride every time i go to south america and the the people uh, the 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 feedback i have there is at the beginning and everywhere really with the latin latino american people uh, or Lat latin people is everywhere i can tell you wherever i am and it's a group of south american guys latin american guys whatever they fucking go to me and have a lot of things to say and, and talk about and this is like priceless man this is like really priceless and as you say like every time i go to chile i go with with an extra uh, like a heart or or saying like that and uh, i can say in this time i feel pretty it feel pretty like um uh, I don't, not not scary normal but uh fucking good normal then the 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 metal heads are in there mm -hmm. it, it is a, it is like a, i cannot say there i, I can i don't want to say it's part a metal head now is part of the society but it's more or less kind of that we are part of the society now it's a lot of metal heads who does normal jobs then before was completely forbidden to wear like a a tattoo a, a black t-shirt or long hair today yeah. today seems to be like okay in south america where where the countries are still very fucking catholic and it's still a lot of stigmas about religion and shit chile is one of the like a really apostate uh, apostasy countries uh, <laughs> in latin america man I like this satanic motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but this is this is why I mean when I say it's relatable, you know, because that's exactly the the case of Iran as well, where you've got you know yep. they'll just yep. they'll arrest a band just uh, for fucking playing the music. Absolutely, I have many many examples from Iran. I have friends from Iran and and Iraq also, and sure. uh, they have been telling me exactly the same way we talk many years back and and it's the resemblance of what i was living also i can imagine this was super similar situation and the people is we are we are a lot in common absolutely in, in yeah, the I way so we too. we are the society it is like uh, we, we we came from a background of family you know we are we are groupal uh, persons we are not just individuals yeah. as here in scandinavia for example they are not very, cold yeah, people we are, we are very we are very like uh, hot and warm uh, like uh, hard uh, hot bones between between people between family between close friends we are all always like to gather together this is what i'm i i tell them that i see a lot of similarities between uh, latin american people and i don't know iraq iran like I, I, it is similarities and you have been going through fuck a lot of shit also like 
corrupt governments, manipulations, murdering, military assault, like a slaughter. I mean, we have been living, we have been walking through blood in the streets, man. And it's your own people blood. And that's that's not nice to see it. No, not at all. But I think that in the case of uh, people like ourselves or really anyone else who finds themselves in the situation, uh, especially those who find their passion and, and their will in uh, metal and especially like a more extreme forms of metal. The passion I is the think, thing who has let us continue. I think so. But I think that's the yep. beauty of it. It's the fact that right. you're not meant to do that, but then you do it and you find right. every definition that yep. and, and every bit of liberation that you could ever want in life just through that one thing. You know, I it's mean, it's the not, liberation. Yeah. 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 I mean, is life this, is, is not, this way to... It's the way to the pure and, 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 and true liberation. It's like give you a lot of strength when, when uh, the, 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 the way is uncertain, you, you just go and, and you go firmly. You're not doubting what are you doing. And, and sometimes it past time and you don't realize, but in one moment you will turn around and, and, and look and uh, feel satisfaction. Yeah. This satisfaction, you feel it when it's done. You don't have to like push yourself to like be a successful person because first you need to get the, the spirit moves. You need to get the, like the, this liberation. What are you talking? And when you, when you reach it, then you can see your back and, 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 and feel satisfaction or, or, or feel a bit annoying things. Then you can, then you have been not finished because sometimes this happened. You, you have like a spike there in your back for many years and, and you cannot finish until you reach the your piece of time or whatever and then you can feel it for example it happened to me with uh, with halpen mm -hmm. it's like uh, difficult to find the, the the right time to put all this energy in this like absolutely beautiful project i have and and uh, it's so serious for me it's so important then it's not like really easy to handle it and i'm here in sweden and my brother is in chile uh, for this the, the work have been a bit slow but we are not pushing nothing i mean we don't need to hurry we just want to put what we want to show on on a, on, on a material on a, on a cd on a vinyl whatever and let the people think and, and get their opinion about what we are doing i know and we know, then we will keep ourselves as a very underground band. I don't see, I, mean, I don't see Halpen going nowhere else than this deep, dark underground scene. Then we already like get born. This will be our our way and our our path. Of course, we will develop our our meaning, our concept, and this is what uh, we now we record a second album. We did like couple of nearly no, not a year but a couple of months ago my brother Juan Pablo came to Sweden we record here in Uppsala we build the lineup here with a Chilean drummer who is also from he's living is moving here now and uh, and uh, we finally we could record in a proper way in a, in, a, in a good studio everybody there because before everything was like me here Juan Pablo in Chile and we connect online <laughs> kind of that links sure. there links here links there then somebody makes somebody must but now we could do we could do everything together and that was great and uh, the last uh, part was done by by george in pentagram studios in greece oh great uh, right george from uh, yeah from lucifer child that's right yeah yeah and uh, fucking fantastic i just got the the master some days ago before i went this weekend to play in poland with vatain i couldn't listen today i've been listening good all the and uh, it's it's there will be soon out i need still to talk with the label to try to push the release it's gonna be released by black lodge the sound I was just pollution about to ask label. you. You really you yeah. announced that you were with Black It's a uh, sound pollution. Uh, the the metal store who has a label, underground label, is called Black Black Lodge, and they will release this album. And That's cool, uh, man. I hope I hope it's it's uh, going to be released at the end of the year because after the Latin American tour, then uh, then we will do with Batain. I will stay in Chile to perform with the uh, Halpen, and the idea is like to do the release 
in a fireland, very south in the bottom of, of Chile, in Patagonia. This will be our release show, and uh, we will try to record the show. Uh, I don't know, this, this is a place that is very difficult to build big concerts and things like that. It's very difficult for the, for the guys who try to organize, bring bands because everything is expensive. Uh, the amount of people is not much for, for like cover, uh, like a big production. But uh, this is an obligation we have, as we see as a band. Then we need to reach the bottom of Chile and we will play there in Fireland, our release show for this album. And uh, maybe we will do two more shows in Chile or or some other country, but uh, it's a very short time I will be and I want to spend that time with them and to do like proper, th at least three release shows in my country. And this is something that I'm still uh, working it uh, because it's tempting to go to another countries also, but, but, but first, first I need to do the good planning and uh, uh, very good, like uh, showing all the concept of this album um, and to show more the concept of the band, what is like a kind of very uh, shamanic ba background from the old, uh, can I say, ethnias or, or tribes from the, from the old South. And uh, it's very, very, very mystical thing with a, with a raw black metal uh, music entwined. I mean, that sounds cool as fuck, man. I was actually going to ask you about uh, Halpen anyway. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah. Halpen? Yeah. I, yeah. I meant to, yeah, because obviously I uh, I got your first album. Uh, well, you released some demos and stuff before that, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. I got your first album uh, and it's, it's very interesting. And obviously you mentioned about uh, Juan Paulo as well. And I've, right. been, I've been in touch with him for about seven, eight years now since he used to yep. be in uh, Swarm of Hatred, I think. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah that's right. And uh, it was really cool. Obviously, I saw when you guys initially announced this uh, uh, collaboration, if you will. And uh, it's very interesting to me because it's uh, yeah, there's this, certain elements of just traditional... That uh, band started as a, as a project when... Uh, uh, well, the first demo was like uh, we start as a project. What we do, we have different ideas with Juan Paolo. He's is very much younger than me, and uh, first uh, we we start with like uh, our friendship and things like that. And when he left the Swarm of Hatred, he we were talking and he showed me some ideas that he had, and I like it very much. And uh, then this is how we build the first demo, and mm -hmm. uh, and we call it. Black Rights, the first demo, because that was the name we were on the way to use as a band. But then we start to dive a bit more in the mythology and, and, and all this like uh, old myths and tradition from the old area, the past area of the of this uh, extinguished ethnias, you know, the extinguished tribes of the South. And uh, we get like completely like drunk by this knowledge man and uh, then we decide really to focus in, in in that way try to have a lot of research contact people from the communities contact uh, like uh, his people who study the real history of it and or have more or have some blood of of these tribes who can give us more information about their, their religious part their their traditions the occult traditions what is super rich but uh, it's very lost it's super lost it's mm. like sadly lost in in time and history for this i mean also we are tried to do some kind of research yeah uh, how do you even go about uh, getting uh, some of these elements incorporated into the music because i know obviously the lyrics and and the way you yeah. arrange them is very much in a ritualistic manner so that, just wondering that, that if you can be, get a bit deeper into that part for me that's very important that should be for us super like a critical part then should be as you say it should be like a shown as a, as a very ritualistic part because it's all about the the legacy of the of the tradition the shamanic traditions then and and, and express in a, in, a, in a black metal uh, extreme raw, uh, well, it's our all, also it's our own to, to manipulate our black metal. I, I'm very in, in, in a, from a death metal background, mm. 
but mm -hmm. uh, Juan Pablo is for from 100% from the black metal generation and and we understand each other super good in the moment to like talk and and create and compose music and uh, this is also in ourselves when we talk or compose something is is first the the way to to use the lyrics to use the the singing part to use like uh, some elements as you say of of like a very like lost traditions and this is the part then it's more difficult this when you go to people who knows go to people who is completely out of they don't even know what music we are playing but right, uh, they, they 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 help us with knowledge they help us with the 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 exact meanings the translations and they also pointed out the the, the errors or the mistake what are in books ah i see you yeah. know and this this is for me is super important for example not not so important as the pronunciation for example the name of the band it came from a i can say for an entity who can be a goddess of the of the underworld from from the selkenam uh, tradition it's called uh, halpen as i i've been learned but uh, can also be pronounced as shalpen hmm. It depends. Depends. For example, in, it's also this like uh, the moving of the language between Argentinians and Chileans, and uh, and and this uh, these groups, ethnical groups, was in the bottom. I mean, is where now is Chile and Argentina. And sometimes you you see from from guys in Argentina from the communities they they pronounce a bit different than the the in the in the Chilean side or or the more like uh, pedagogic guys. They they are following other other patterns, and this is all things. Then it's interesting to know also. And I'm not very strict in the pronunciations, but I'm I'm very strict in the way to to approach this uh, knowledge to people through music. It's not just like uh, to talk about like uh, uh, mythological things. It's like more more in the deep, more in the meaning or to. To yourself also to entwine with your own philosophy and uh, in your own time it's, it's it's like a it's like a time uh, it's like a time loop then you have to you have to go and 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 you get lost in there in this oroborus you know and, and this is the interesting part for me and the and the very exciting uh, and and the pushing one in Halpen for us is is this new approach that we are doing very respectful with all the spirituality, but uh, somehow we need to show it in 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 a better way to to the listener. And I think the only way is like to rise up the levels of recordings and and uh, and to show now open a bit more the band. Don't let the band so unknown. I mean. Now then, we are like we already are in the road. I mean, the band. This is like our second studio album, but uh, it's the really like the first good like professional production with us. And then uh, mm -hmm. this will be a lot of plans for us. I hope so. And now we'll be double full, full busy. I mean, every single time then I will have a break uh, for Watain. I will be full on working for Halpen. And that's, that's awesome that's, to hear. That's also get, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is something then I really like. I mean, I, I now time will be against me. <laughs> <laughs> now that's that's great to hear, man. I mean, I can see how passionate you are about this project, and uh, I will love one day play with you guys also. Absolutely, fuck you. Yeah. Build, build some you. show here in Europe. We can do like a short tour together. I don't know. That will be great, man. Yeah, Trivex on Halpen 2023, yeah. confirmed. Yeah, right, cool. <laughs> right, this is like great. I mean, that will be super good yeah, yeah, yeah. because we both are kind of in, in the same path and uh, it will be great to hang around with you guys. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think I think we it's, it's, it's obvious, man. I think we have a lot in common. Yeah, I think yeah for be, example, with, with Halpen, we, we are like a very handle it ourselves the situation it's no management it's not agencies the label is mm -hmm. like a small label it's like more or less to to release the material and uh, we we see how to work with our promotion and uh, and for 2023 yeah really now it's time to like start to set up good plans 
maybe here in Europe will be will be very nice to do a first step to do like a small tour first one for us to get a bit more of uh, touching knowing feedback in this continent I mean and uh, next probably will be we have to obligated to do South America but I will see how how things goes and in my like a free time kind of that from Vatain, I will plan a lot of things for helping. Now with this new album, we are preparing a video. Like uh, we need uh, something that we are never doing before. Like we have been doing some lyric videos for show some songs and, but probably this time we will work a bit. We will do a bit of uh, like a step ahead in the in a in a way a band today is necessary to show. I mean, a video is like today nobody buy a video but uh, the video is super necessary to have it there in youtube just to check the band yeah i, mean, I think i think if you can do a video right it can be super useful you know it's yeah. something that uh because the images right, be e exactly visually you also can show and and explain and express a lot of things then get a bit uh, lost in the music or or lyrically mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, one of the like speaking of, of that with lyrically, I think one of the things I found super interesting about uh, about your band. I mean, I watched some videos and I noticed that yeah. uh, both of you guys were doing the vocals at the same time, almost right. like throughout, almost like entire sections uh, of a like, song. And I feel like that actually really added onto the right. ritualistic element of okay. it. And I was just wondering what, because uh, obviously you've done all of this research through these tribes and things that you said are basically now forgotten about. Uh, what are some of the interesting things that uh, you've learned from them, actually, that you think you might be able to share with us, like some of the stories and stuff? Uh, I tribes? mean, I mean, yeah, some stories, some uh, the same uh, myths or, or how you call it, fabulas or whatever, they're pretty cool. I mean, interesting because it's entwined with a lot of uh, different far cultures and ancient cultures also. Maybe mm. some names change, but the meanings and, 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 and the, uh, the developing, uh, developing of things are pretty much the same. I can even uh, come back to the old Sumerian times. With a lot of a lot of like a mystical thing, the way to see deities, I mean, they for example they didn't had gods in their pantheon. They they all has like uh, entities. Is uh, different meanings for everything. It was not like a, like a, I don't know, not monotheist. Of course, it's not. It's completely far from Christianity on all this new shit. But uh, it's it's everything based in shamanic development. And, and and their genesis is like uh, very similar to all these like ancient uh, cultures, like because they 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 talk a lot of the of the out outer space. They talk a lot of of the different dimensions. They talk a lot of of of, of what you can see in a, in a chaosophy or or in 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 a pure Luciferianism. Mm. It, it's a lot of like uh, spiritual teachings and, and the society, the group of them, they, their lives was, was moving by spiritual meanings. And uh, the shamans, for example, they were the highest like uh, entities in their communities. They were the ones who give you like, advices. They were the, 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 the doctors and they were the, the priests. They, they were the, the healers. I mean, they knew they were connected with the ancient one who was the, the, the ones who, in all the cultures, we have creators for, for say, it somehow, who, who give you the legacy, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the, or the tools, the spiritual tools they, they, they give to the, to the human race in that time. And uh, by Onirica, Onirical uh, legacy. I mean, all, all is, in, is, is in a shamanistic way. All, all is in this shamanic uh, field in the sea of magic, you know, and, and then pure in time, then it's like, uh, it's, it's uh, also fantasy. It's a lot of fantastic thing among this. It's like uh, 
old races that have been disappeared, who are the legacy of the new races who already are extinguished by genocide, you know, and it's a lot of lost information in there. I mean, the 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 last or or, or the best guys who like uh, uh, wrote and 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 be there study all this was in the late uh, or the beginning of nineteenth century, in, in uh, eighteen eighty nine. From then to nineteen twenty, this was the time when they were studying this uh, extinguished uh, uh, etnias where all the all the Salesians and missionaries go, went there with a very contradiction, uh, controversial uh, purpose to with salvation, but uh, the salvation became unextinguished, like mm. extinction. This salvation, wow. when they, well, they bring there was like uh, extinction. Okay, the new today these communities and the 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 blood the. Uh, the bloodline people from this uh, all etnias they say that they are not extinguished but uh, they have been lost more than 90 percent of their traditions i see that's, and, that's and, so and no yeah. and, and no talk about the 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 religious part the the, the mystical part is is super difficult to get it's like more more you need to speculate a lot and 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 when you speculate, you need to be very careful because you can fall in a mistake very easy. And 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 uh, in this serious part, and when you are when you are putting on the table culture, ancient culture, like it's very 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 uh, it's very very wrong if you if you commit uh, mistakes. Then you need to like check and double check. And sometimes three times check all the meanings, everything. And uh, the same reason why we decide to sing both, everything, is like more or less than the lyrics are made by both. And, uh, and it's like the way to, to, to go on with our, our two, two forces. Then uh, from the beginning, we, we, we build the band. And this this will always be there i mean we have to mm. be two two entities like projecting the vocalization in there i think that makes it very interesting when it's like that because you're just adding more emphasis into every phrasing of the words you know and you're adding energy to it exactly you know what we were saying earlier about writing letters it's like the same yeah. uh, words you know like words in their own they have the yeah. uh they're almost like spells that's what we call it spelling yeah that when you speak yeah. words you're unlocking right. certain things and, in, in the universe right. and, and with I, I also can say can say then with help pen it have been like a very different way to work i mean uh, i'm not a young guy I, i've been doing a lot of i wouldn't be able to tell <laughs> I've been doing a lot of recordings and things like that in, in different ways. And mm -hmm. uh, with Halpen, I can say that the way to work is completely different. It's completely, I never yeah. did that before. I always, I can say like, how was my always way to work in, in my music, in my bands Then I've been uh, uh, participating. It's like uh, working the music and over this, going through lyrics. But then when the music is, is ready, then it's the way when you finish 100% the lyric with help and I can say then then I've been start some song because the lyric and some songs oh. have been like building building in the middle with the lyric and the music it's not like okay this is a song we need a lyric no I've been never like that in help and and that's a strange and I hope this is still we can keep that way until now it's fantastic to have this kind of freedom and 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 a liberation of, of 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 do this kind of things to not to not fall in patterns. That's the the important part. Then I don't want to miss and want to lost in here. I can, you know, like you mentioned the case of uh, writing music first and then doing lyrics afterwards. I can definitely see that yeah. with some of your previous work, like for example, with the uh, Undercroft on Runes of Gamora. Yeah. You got that one song. Yep. Uh, 
dead human flesh. It's just yeah. dead human flesh. Dead human <laughs> yeah. flesh. Over and the riff, like you know? The, that's and, just the riff, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And this lyric was like a push to be sing like that by the drummer. You can imagine right. why. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. No, but that's really cool, man. I, I love what you're doing with this band, and I'm excited to For hear example, more. with Undercroft, uh, or, or yeah. even with Execrator, we, we like build the songs like that. I mean, uh, more, I can explain more it, it, with Undercroft because we were living too m long time together. I mean, we built the songs. And when the songs was done, I did always the lyric, but with the guys, we always like check the singing part, you sure. know? And, and as I said, like the drummer had always something to say, like, because the marks, you ah, sing this, and it's good to like, not, it's not, I, I never liked them being like with the lyric okay here i sing that's it i like when the when the rest of the musicians in the band get like involved in every spot doesn't matter if it's not the head composer doesn't matter because sometimes in a band <clears throat> not everybody compose uh, and this i wonder is, i don't know if i'm looking is, in and this is not okay. that relevant for me really because i don't know I don't know. I've been working in different ways for that. For that, it's like I'm very like open in that thing. I don't see a pattern of how to compose, and it's better when you like somehow show up something that was completely different way, and you are like, oh shit, it was good, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I good. appreciate that, man. And yeah, uh, yeah I, I, as I was saying, I think you're doing something really interesting with uh, Halpen as well, and I'm excited to uh hearing your next album um cool. i think uh one of the things that i was going to actually ask you about because obviously we went on to the uh subject of all of these tribes uh, all of these ancient religions uh, some of which that you mentioned actually uh, for me at least kind of resembled a little bit of some of the ancient uh, brazilian cults as well like yep. uh, Coimbanda with like Eshu yeah. and Pombagira and, and, and all of those kind of deities. This, but... this also have similarities. It's have, sure. a, it have some similarities. Even Quimbanda is pretty new if you compare with the with the traditions and and, and, and tribes I'm talking about. Sure. Quimbanda is super new. This this uh, Selknam and Yamanas, the, the southern cone is like you have registered 10,000 years back. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I see. I see. That's yeah. That's yeah. that's really interesting, man. It, it's but some this cave, is what I was, caves um... and, and, and some caves and all uh, pictoric things. Then it, it has like counted as eleven thousand years back. That's fucking crazy. Because uh, yeah. I mean, that's uh, fucking hell. I mean, I'm I'm just going by the, the just the history of, of of Britain, for example, and that is like. That's about as like I think that must have been like the first people who actually came to this island, you know. So for I South mean, America, they, all those they have, ago, that's insane. They have they have this uh, theory of uh, some kind of genesis. Then uh, uh, even the geographic uh, part, uh, the maps. I mean, they, they didn't road map, but they, they described five thousand years ago was different. And this sure. is uh, the, the very contradiction of the of the people, the researchers, the 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 studies. You know, it's yeah. like kind of it is a fiction or it's true. You know. Yeah, 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 for sure. But the reason why I brought that up is because I, this is the thing I was going to ask you about. I recall reading this, I think, on an interview you might have done with Bar the Methodology, maybe about uh, yeah. four or five years ago. And his interviews yeah. are always always great. Yeah. But uh, I yeah. remember you mentioning something uh, that uh, during your upbringing in Chile, you uh, met a shaman yeah. uh, who you used to uh, spend some time with. And I, I don't know if, if I'm butchering this. I only read this the one time, but I re it really stuck with me. And I remember you mentioning something about how there was like a window in his house where there was like right. no light this shining is, through or something. This is Do you remember special, that correctly? This is a special place it's in a, in the south of Chile. It's a big island. It's called the, the Island of the Wizards. And uh, mm. there, there also is a lot of links through this very south cone people. You know, when when they start all these like uh, missionaries and the colonists arrive there, they start to go up to this uh, island who were people that they said that they were older than the southern they said that there was 
more or less it was a big culture in there and and we are talking easy like 12 thousand years back and uh these people was called like uh, and they have many names but some people said why the the chile name came they were like called kind of like that the tribes and they have many myths this 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 island is well known for be the wizard island and uh, of course when you were young you were very i was very interesting in there uh my first time there i had a luck to the lucky meeting with an old uh, an old grandfather in there and uh, man yeah it's like uh, this this people who is completely magical i mean you don't know you see their eyes and you don't know which age they have they're like look like 200 years old but they behave like 20 years old like incredible like they just carry wood like man instead of like uh, go and sit your dirty ass and and all all the like herbalistic all the like old tradition of like nature magic the I was very, very in contact. And, and I can say the first time in this house when we mentioned, I remember I mentioned to Nicholas about that. We were sitting in one room and uh, we realized then the, the window was open. It was a sunny day, sunny and cloudy. This, this island is super weird, the weather. And, uh, but we realized then the light of the sun didn't come into the room. It was not like a square spot on the ground, on the walls project from the window we just see the light outside and was no light inside and of course the house didn't have a electric light it was all by candles but it was a daytime and uh, and everything the smell the, the the feeling there you you get out of there and you get like 50 kilos on your shoulder man and uh, but good because you need to it depends this is like uh, still shamans then the people go there and use them as healers they it's a lot of like myth about like uh, maledictions and things like that sure and and uh, the the big myth they have in this island it was like in the 16th century was like a spanish or european uh, magician high magician who who was on a, in this island, his boat was on the shore, and uh, he asked the people who he wanted to meet the big uh, magician. And it came an old shaman uh, woman, is called Mashis. And, and they were like nights and nights, I don't know, it was like kind of a week of a magical fight. They, they went to the seaside, and this European guy and, and the, and the and the Indian uh, shaman, and uh, she win at the end, and the guy give her a big grimoire, and then it came another history. She went to a cave. It's called Salamancas. The caves who are connected through all the world, you know, and uh, they start the they start a, a, a kind of like a a big uh, thing about the the mixture the the entwine between. European magic and their culture, their magic in, in, in Chile. And, and it started to create something very interesting who was called like the Recta Provincia. It was like the wizard kingdom. Recta Provincia. Yeah, Recta Provincia. Yeah. Like it's, it's like the, the, the kingdom of the wizard and was seven kingdoms. And they were ruled by wizards, by shamans until and they have their own rules and everything. And this all came out uh, to the law, to the Chilean law. And they start to do like a witch hunt. It was a big ah. judge of, of a wizard and, and witchery in there until this had to be disappeared. And it was it's a lot of books and books about this who was reserved from the old uh, the ones who didn't burn because the most of these art archives get burned by by magic you know <laughs> everything yeah. burns down and uh, this is super interesting this is, this is a very big very big uh, chapter in the in the in the i mean mythical or mythological traditions of the south is many tribes and, and many things who 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 have been survived and, and calculate their their ages like over ten thousand years back i mean 
and is and, and this for example this uh, wither kingdoms this is something pretty new i think they get down in half of 19th century then they disappear and they say then they still exist and things like that but in these places you can feel that you can feel that energies you can you you really realize then you are in another world you are in another planet i mean the people work different the people it is different and they have many mythological things uh beings and people is is connected with that in one way it's like guys with one eye here one eye here one eye hanging near to the ear and then they're like i don't know they have different names they the ones the guards of the of the caves it's a lot of guards of the caves you know people who is kind of you can you can also like uh, relate to the Romanian tradition of uh, Strigoi, the Strigoi sure. Mort and the Stri uh, Strigoi V. It's also there. It is the like uh, the Strigoi Mort, and the ones who are kind of zombies dead. They they live in the in the dead realm, and the ones who who are dead but live in the living realm, and they are protectors. They are servants. They are guardians of of the wizard. That's right. It's yeah, all this yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah, it's all Obviously this. Obviously, like, you've got uh, like that really, mark. You've got that really weird area in uh, Romania mm. as well, just because you mentioned them with this, these like, yeah. forests with the energies fucked and people just go and disappear there. They call it like portal to hell. Exactly. 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 I think it's. I think I've it's been in a few places. I've been in a few places of Romania, who is like very energetic yeah. places, very energetic places. And great. I I love Transylvania. Also, it's like. Of course. Beautiful, 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 full of legends. Yeah, I'm yet to visit, actually, but I would love to. Uh, I love to go there. Uh, I think uh, the, it's interesting. My girlfriend is from there. A anytime we go, I will let you know. <laughs> yeah, sounds great. Sounds great. I, I know Helga's from Romania. Yeah, that would be that would be great, man. Uh, no, that it's, would be it's, awesome. It's, there. Uh, it's, a, it's a great place. Man. Yeah, it's a great place. I think, you know, what fascinated me was just how you mentioned about the witch hunting thing and how it was such a big deal back then it's interesting yep. to me to sort of think and, and just comprehend how that's almost always been a part of humanity where you've got people who have the capability to i suppose manipulate reality in some ways right. uh, if you want to look at it from the non-cynical approach and and that yep. there's always forces that that try and battle that to uh, snuff it out I, I think i think that's almost happening today i almost to a degree feel like uh even with metalheads you know when we really yep. unleash the potential of this music that's that's kind of uh where we really go but um the thing i, I wanted to ask you just from like a personal opinion thing how much do you think um there's uh there's there's influence or involvement from psychedelics when it comes to all of these kind of um so well, which this experiences? i this i see it very personal this I see it in a very personal approach. I mean, it depends how you you are confronting or 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 in front your spiritualism. I mean, sometimes you need the keys of psychedelics to to dive or or fly or or travel to different corners of this like labyrinth, mm -hmm. and uh, the, normally you are not able to do it. To, to transform or, or transgress without any like uh, opening and, and these keys these openers I think it, sometimes it, it is uh, it's a well use of uh, psychedelics sometimes. how much do you think that they they had a role in these uh, tribes that you spoke of uh, or they, for example they, like they, the wizard island is, that you mentioned yeah this is was their way to 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 have onirical visions oh it was okay it, it is so. it, it it was and it is i mean all the shamans or all, all, all they were all like uh, they have a special herbs they have special roots special uh, mushrooms uh, or even uh transic mo mo tran trantic trantic moments yes simple it's a lot of like tales of uh of wizard uh chasing uh, whales just with chants right i see wow for for, for example yeah. and, and there is a lot of legends of uh, giants a lot of legends of of, of very mythological oh, the nephilim yeah kind of yeah. yeah it's very 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 similar to the nephilim uh, era and yeah. also the 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 inner earth people the 
the ethereal people, you know, it's like this, who today you can see it as a, a legend book when you read about it, but why all the ancient cultures has it? Yeah, and also the, the actual remains of like, that they've found right. actual remains of giants, you know, and, and people, exactly. you know, whose exactly. like, uh, footsteps exactly. were as big the, as an, a two foot person or something. Yeah, the caves, the pictorial, the, 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 the draws, then they did like 10,000 years ago, like drawing like, a, like so morphic uh, images of different groups of people. Yeah. Like uh, you, you, think... you can compare with like sirens, you can compare with like a, uh centaurus i don't know man why they, they also have it there there's a lot of very fascinating things like that i do agree and it's the same for i suppose the water the people well, they, they they have different names for different tribes and, and 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 it's the water people the underwater people i mean what the fuck i met uh you know years and years ago uh when i was still in iran I met a guy, he was really fucking dodgy, but uh, he was, uh, now obviously this never ended up happening, but basically this was, go this guy, he, in allegedly he worked for the, for the, for the presidential cabin, right? Yeah. And we met up in this, we met up with him in this park and basically he was, uh, this was just a meeting, like we never went through with it because we right. didn't trust the fucking guy, but he, um, I even forget his name, but I remember exactly what he looked like. He had one of them proper, like Hezbollah beers, like you could tell he was a dodgy motherfucker. Right. And uh, he he <laughs> was he was talking about these things, and and he he was going to basically smuggle the band out of the country and and take us somewhere yeah. else where we could play music freely. Obviously, yeah. I I thankfully yeah. never had to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. go down that route, and I ended up doing it on my own uh, in a in a much more legal way. But right. um, what he was saying to us was that uh, when they were trying to build the underground metro system in Tehran, right. uh, they actually found a, like a very large remains of basically small people living yeah. on the ground. <laughs> right. And I don't know, obviously, how true this was. And I don't think, from my understanding, these were midgets. But they weren't right. kids either. They were just small people that were right. living on the ground in in jeans. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think jeans have got bones, but there's also plenty of <laughs> right, uh, right, right, right. Stories of that of jeans actually. You know, you mentioned jeans. Like there's also in South Iran. There's there's a lot of uh, folklore about jeans actually uh, coming from the desert and going and living with people in their houses. This is very fascinating and fucking scary as well. <laughs> you know. Hello? One second. Sorry, man. I, I just I just caught out there for a second. That just as we're talking about gyms, oh, or, this weird shit. Yeah, happened. exactly. Perfect. I, I think <laughs> came my girlfriend and opened the door. I knew you were talking about gyms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, right, that's great. Right. Awesome. Man. He, yeah, what happened? You see? <laughs> we talk about the gins. And yeah, I, know, I know, I know, I know. I <laughs> know. Now, okay, they let us Very free again. <laughs> Very interesting, man. I'm not yeah. even surprised. Right. But, I, I uh, yeah, you, you were you about know, to say something. You know, this conversation I came to my mind, uh, a very good writer from Chile who is uh, writing about like uh, austral magic, like the, okay. the, the, the approach to the magic of the, of the southern uh, uh, people or the southern traditions. And, uh, and he's also approaching to a lot of comparative uh, items with different cultures, with the Hinduish culture, with the Babylonian, even with Chinese, Africans. And uh, this opened a very big question about like uh, how much we know about this uh, world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's it's so very little. Uh, yep. You know, I mean, for me, the peak of my own curiosities, I should say, started. Um, I mean, actually, no, it was it wasn't. It was more gradual. 
you know, but uh, throughout maybe when I was, uh, I don't know, I think about 19 years old, yep. that's when I first started experimenting with psychedelics. So I started uh, right. acid and then mushrooms, DMT, and all. I went through all of that at a relatively young age, which kind of, it, it really fucked me up, but also opened my brain, you know, like how it just enters your mind and opens these boxes of information yep. that were there, but you weren't aware of. And right. I sort of understood the relevance of energy and then flash forward a little while later, back in 2016, uh, I had yeah. some, uh, some serious, like crazy fucking paranormal experiences Yeah. Uh, with, with this uh, flat I used to live in in Birmingham, which is, I've, I've talked about it on the first episode of the podcast before. And right. that kind of, op- that made me think that, okay. Yeah. So whatever we think of this world, um, you know, it's uh, in a way, actually, it extended my appreciation for Watain as well, because I, I realized a little bit more of what what this band was actually doing. And, and, and with, Watain, I, with Watain, I can say also it is kind of a psychedelic experience. Sure. Like not naturally. I can, I can, for yeah, me, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like me, that just even me, watching. I've been, show, I've, been, I've been like that. I've been like that since since I entered the band or, or since I first approached to them musically, it, it has a, like a very different and, and a special touch. I can say with the time, it's kind of like a psychedelic experience. Every time it's like every time opening different portals, different uh, vortexes in, in your own, in your own research, in, in your own path, in your own way. I mean, here you are not uh, fighting against somebody. You are, you're for for the opposite you are opening kind of like a knowledge to the others hmm. i mean this doesn't i don't want to sound like then i have then i have like the last the word and uh, everything to teach or something but it's like uh, it's honestly a pure like unknown experience then you are trespassing and i'm and giving through the music through the frequencies through the through the sensitive emotions you go through it's like a psychedelic experience yeah i can i can completely see that uh, and i think um obviously as you call it the temple it's an assault on all of your senses not just the audience but i can only imagine yeah. what it's like as a performer and the thing is as well i've met uh, i've met everyone in the band multiple times you know yeah. uh, obviously yes but yes. there's something and it's like everyone that, that everyone's people at the end of the day but then right there's something else that happens when Absolutely. you're all together on stage Absolutely. and all of those elements are Absolutely. put together and it's and it is like not just in a stage i mean this is this is a work who came before and after anyway hmm. yeah and, and that's, think... the, that's the important bond and that's the, like priceless bond that we have and that's like unbreakable thing then then uh, push you to continue absolutely man yeah yeah how do you uh because obviously there's also been uh, quite a lot of changes in the setting of the band as well right uh more so than i think anyone ever acknowledges but from i'm gonna say well obviously 2014 15 onwards there there were quite a lot of changes and then obviously with set being the last one uh about four four and a half years ago i think yeah. Uh, how how have you found those kind of changes? And obviously, having been through the band, I mean, all of those it, it is a, before. It is like steps who 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 take place somehow by its own self. Hmm. It's like you are moving a lot of forces. Is 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 the devil the hands in there? And and and, and all these forces are 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 going towards the same the same abyss abyss you know mm. we are going to the same vortex and and then the same forces i think who have been like uh, putting the things together and, and make us in a in a continuation kind of like a a new challenge a new persons inside like uh, we're in, now part of Batain is like two guys from Dejel and they have been many years with us and and this also give like an extra an, an extra an extra magical thing to our own purpose 
as you say, at the end of the day, everybody, everybody's like a, a like a person. But uh, we we are creating something special when we are together. Then you forget your person. It's like a, the the whole entity. What is Vatain is what you are like pushing up and developing. Mm -hmm. That's that's the that's the most important thing there. Then then you don't uh, really you leave your humanity <laughs> or say it like that. At the home, when you when you have to do something with but in, in my case, it's like it's over myself. It's something then it's like uh, I'm a minimum thing in there. I'm 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 a piece who put who can make the engine works. I'm I'm just a piece. We are all different pieces, very important pieces in their in their spot. And 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 if something moves and and we need a new piece or or, or things change. The, the the purpose at, at, and the the goal will be the same. I mean the the, the fulfill of, of of our uh, what we have to show and we we are representing it it will be there hundred percent. I mean this is something that we all has in ourselves. It's like the the, the the spiritual connection we are all in in, in Vatain is very important. I, I think that's very evident uh, and uh, it seems to be th there seems to be this thing that obviously when you watch the band live you can focus on individual members but it seems to be that the real thing is it's like a, it's something else that's between you all yeah yeah well that, that, that that's uh, that's uh, I cannot uh, I cannot be so objective in this because I only see what I'm one time with no, without playing. I mean, the first sure. time I saw what I it was in Partisan before I entered the band. And this was my first experience with the band. And it was like completely mind blowing. Man. Was this around the time when uh, Seth was playing bass for them before yep. he switched to guitar? Right. Okay, right. yeah. And that's when they still used to play the Vaughn cover live as well, correct? In like 2005, yeah, uh, I think, just before Swan. Yeah. I, I've been playing the... Yeah. I'm a Watain nerd, the, man. The cover. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing a few times this cover. It's fucking fantastic band, man. Yeah, for sure. But that was really cool when you played with them, uh, I think, in uh, Armageddon Fest in London in 2010, right? Right. right. Yeah, because lots right. of our, our that was like an insane lineup. You had like yeah, I think yeah, Repugnant yeah. doing some of their last shows. Yes, you had the yes, Devil's Blood. Yes, yes. And uh, some of our friends here in Funeral Thrones were also playing with you for that. I think which is like, right. fucking crazy. Right. That was I'm pissed off as well because that was just a year before I moved to the UK. Otherwise, that I would have loved okay. to have fucking seen that man. Okay, would have been crazy. I, I wanna I wanna point it out something. Then you tell me for for example the the same of, as your background. I have some friends. Mm -hmm. Who have to move from Iran and uh, the same reason. I mean, they they have to like go hidden out of the country because they were metalheads and and in that time this was impossible there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's they, they were that's even treating now. treating like have death threats. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You do get that. It's because Alvaro. I think it's. Um, there's multiple aspects to this here. I think the main one that I feel like is at the root of it all yep. is obviously is the connection between the religion and the politics. Uh, exactly. The mullahs. You know, the, the fucking mullahs. That's right. Yes, you know, yes, it's like yeah. that religion and politics are, are very strongly bonded over there. I mean, right. the country right. was right. legally uh, changed to the Islamic Republic of Iran the, at the end of 70s. And That's Yes. Obviously, you know right. that mixing politics and religion is like throwing a menthol I, pill into I, a bottle I, of co Coca-Cola. I, I know, my friend. I know, my yeah. friend. And, and there is the result. I mean, watch what happened to your country. Look what happened to my country. Look what happened yep. to many countries, man. Yep, yep, absolutely. And the thing with that is that if you are one of the fundamental... Um, sort of uh, laws within islam is that if you are a born muslim uh or if you convert to islam at any point doesn't matter if yep. you are a muslim yep. and for whatever reason you choose to step away from this religion or deen as they call it yeah 
then that means that your blood will become halal to all of the Muslims. So basically, right. they've got the right to fucking kill you. Yeah, so exactly. not only not only exactly. is this punishable by the government, but your yeah. average civilians now yeah. feel like they have the right to this, fucking come and kill you because I, you're I now mean, a Satanist or atheist or whatever. I it's mean, all the I same. I heard today. the same from my friends. Like, yeah, they. I mean, they they tell me a lot of things. Then it was like fucking cool because it was very similar from the. 80s in chile like uh, i mean they were like doing their own guitars you know they were trying to do in their own amplifier from an old radio and shit like that and hiding in some cellar to play like try to good and one of them was the father in his side and he can like uh okay i will shut up uh, don't tell your yeah. mother kind of this <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i actually yeah you mentioned for example about the basement thing uh, Trivex from, I'm going to say 2010 to 2011, just around 2010, I think we built the place. Um, we had our own basement, uh, right. which was like obviously illegal, but this was in yeah. the drummer's house. It was yeah. a basement and we had covered all of the walls with uh, with egg exactly. cases if, and, and cement. Exactly the same as yeah. my friends did. All right. they, they had a band in that time, it was called Nights of Fire. Nights of Fire. That's the yeah. first I'm hearing about that. Right. And they're, they're luthiers now. They, they do guitars. Very cool. Crimson Oath is called. Their... Oh, that now rings a bell. Yeah. yeah Crimson it's Oath rings Mer a bell. Mer and Orang. I they're, will have to look them up. They're fine. Orang is in my age. Mer is younger. But they are kind of fantastic guys. And, and we spend days and nights talking about the same stuff we are talking now. And uh, they listened my my life or kind of my history, and I was listening their side of the thing. And we spent days, nights, like man, it was like fantastic. They explained me a lot of things. It was very similar to what was happening in Chile with me personally. And uh, but I see in, in in your case it was more strict because they said mullah stuff, the, the Islamic thing, and shit. This was more more drastic yeah yeah i think uh, i mean i've said the story before um because we actually did play some shows there as well which were like totally fucking illegal but we did it yep. anyway we we're like yeah it. Exactly. You, know, but, <laughs> you know like uh, again similar situation but right. i myself i was lucky because i never uh, i had some troubles with authorities yeah. and i've had threats whilst i've been in the uk uh, for obvious reasons uh, unfortunately my family also were contacted sometime after i left uh, because right. i don't know if you recall but the last time i was i was in iran i might have done some cases of watain graffiti all over uh, Iqbal yeah. Khan, <laughs> yes yes and yes. Uh, that obviously that and like certain other stuff that i did with trivex it, that kind of got me into shit after i left there but yeah. Uh, thankfully, I was able to get away with it. But the very first show that we played uh, with Trivex in Iran, yeah. uh, I mean, this is actually on the Metallica podcast, on the Black Album podcast they did on episode nine. Uh, I, uh, we were doing this gig at the Kamalol Molk uh, High School. It's like a high school, but in right. Iran, from age, I think, seven onwards, they separate boys and girls in schools. Right. So basically, you're you're like cock blocked from childhood, right? <laughs> and uh, Shit. yeah, it's bad, man. I used to have yeah, like, I know. Not, I, I, like I'll digress a bit after this, but fucking like I used to have to go to the uh, the local high school when I was like 14 just to actually see girls and talk to them. Yeah. Maybe exchange numbers. <laughs> I had to go go all the way across to the other side of right, the, right, the right. area. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that was more <laughs> drastic. Man. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's it's, it's fucking primitive environments, man. You know, it shapes us to who we are today. But the thing with that first show was that we played this underground place, and we actually did a bunch of Metallica covers. But yep. then after a while, we were like, "Yeah, fuck it, everyone's already here," so we just carried on playing. And then I started like fucking right. playing Mayhem's Funeral Fog, and drums right, started right. going faster. And it was basically the the reason why I mentioned the uh, the single sex situation is because you've got about 200 kids who are all around 14 to 16 years old full yeah. of fucking testosterone you know exactly. uh, they've never seen anything like this live ever in their lives they've never even yeah. heard this music to the point that when we started playing the show they all started snapping their fingers and clapping and shit because yeah. they didn't know how to, <laughs> how to enjoy this style how of music react? Yeah, man. yeah 
So, yeah. but what and happened was the situation, was, for example, with the television, the information was completely cut down. Yeah, yeah. That, so, in that regards, it's that like, oh yeah, anyone who plays this music is a satanist. Merlin Manson is the is right. the fucking devil. And and funnily right. enough, right. funnily enough, I don't want to forget what I want to say about the concert. But since we are talking. There was actually a fucking website I found, I think, in 2012, yeah. where they were talking about how metal is evil. And they were talking about how Metallica was uh, stomping on uh, a bunch <laughs> of things during their show and like slaughtering them because they were Satanists and they were doing this for the devil. <laughs> However, yeah. as they are talking about metallica instead of a picture of metallica they've actually used a picture of watane oh, alive and yeah. they're talking about metallica instead so i don't know whether they thought yeah. that you guys were metallica or what but well, very interesting that. thing i'll see if i can find that website all right you. all right i yeah. didn't know <laughs> yeah well, but you can see the the kind of the, the foolishness of it yeah. but yeah this is what i was saying about that show was that um well, anyway, so we I don't believe playing. we are allowed to go and play in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it, man. I'll I'll cover you guys up with like fucking turns. Right, and shit, and right, right. I'll go and play in on the ground show together. Uh, it's, it's difficult cool. to like hide the blown ones. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll dye Pella's hair and, and yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Hodge Pella, but no, listen, fucking. <laughs> the the thing with this show was um we fucking um so we started playing and this yeah. was this was really like a majestic and beautiful thing about it because all of these kids who'd never heard this music yep. Yep. about 30 like, minutes and you can see the possession the right. insanity take over all of them and they were screaming they were throwing like they were fucking yeah. losing their shit like yeah. everyone was possessed and screaming yeah. you can hear it uh, you can hear it on, on the videos because the video is there for the first Trivex show on right. YouTube. And at the right. end of the video, when I finished the solo, you can hear everyone screaming and it's crazy. And what happened was uh, we're into it and then someone else brought in strobe lights. They turned off the lights and whatever. And then I look up about 40 minutes into the show yeah. and I just see this big fuck off smoke coming from the end of the room. And uh -huh. I'm thinking this is the police we're about to get killed so oh, i yeah. prepared myself mentally because i was ready for that moment i was like okay yeah this might I, be the moment i die but fuck it i'm ready come I, come I, on I come on you, you know come you. on you you fucking yeah. cunts yes. i was 16 yes. years old at the time but yeah. and yeah. then it turned out to be just the headmaster of the school coming <laughs> to evacuate everyone because the kids set fire to the end of the fucking room <laughs> <laughs> yeah good yeah so they were I don't passionate think yeah, yeah, but this is the thing, man. This is this is what I'm talking about. You yourself know this. The power of metal music is right. beyond this fucking world. Right. We can, right. with this music, when it's done right and when it's done with the right passion, it can move mountains. It can change societies. Exactly. It can change the whole it, it, fucking it world. Is a, it is a satisfaction, very physical and spiritual satisfaction when 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 you can lead that energies in 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 in, in your in your way in your artistic goal and and that that give that give you satisfactions like i'm, I'm completely Absolutely. talking not nothing material I'm, I'm just talking about the the spiritual satisfaction the the, the yeah the the rich the the moments then then you then you explode and you continue and and you you reborn and and, and you die again you know it's, yeah. it's like kind of death experience absolutely yeah, I've, I always say this. I've never been the same since that. Yep. Like, I remember that day after we obviously had to evacuate and quickly leave the school <laughs> and, and go home. I remember going to sleep as soon as I got home. Like, I was, I was in a weird space. Like, I just went and passed out for like three or four hours. Uh, and this was in the afternoon as well. We played very early in the day. And then ever since I woke up after that, I've never been the same person. Right. You know? Same here. I remember when I was young. I mean, the, the first international big shows in Chile. It was like madness, man. It was like yeah. a madhouse before, before, during, and after the shows. I mean, before you have to lead them, don't get in jail, because police sure. was was all over the place. Try to take metalheads because 
that was their mission. Then inside the gig, you have to enjoy it as fuck because you don't know if when you go out, you will end up in jail, you will get killed by the motherfuckers, or we, you will arrive home good you know this was like a yeah. kind of like a like like the the challenge when you were young and on and, and this big concert was like you against all the fucking uh, things on society even against your neighbors like i don't know they see a, a few guys with the black t-shirt long hair and they they start to get crazy man all yeah, satanic but- they're all satanic and they didn't knew them people was just following music man it is that, but don't you also think that when you're met with that reaction, rather than think, oh, okay, maybe you guys are right, instead you go, yes, I am this. Fuck exactly, you. exactly. Yeah. You build your own field. Yeah, that's and, right. And your field, you know, then, then for them will be a dangerous because when you are in their fields, they, they show danger and, and you are not afraid. But when you create your own field, then, then you have all your weapons and, and that's your laws. Yeah, man, absolutely. What were those first shows like? Was this with Execrator when you mentioned? That yeah, you when when I uh, when I start playing was uh, with Execrator, like the the proper shows, and uh, in that time was like uh, growing still the metal scene there. The people was following like new bands like us. We have a lot of like uh, crazy dudes with us, like friends, people we were knowing on the way. Like as I said, this this time with trades really enrich people have uh, was a different perception or, or or different approach to the bands they really like uh, they really follow with the like uh, to to support you know and that, that was the thing who give you like more motivation to continue continue and, and do better things it doesn't matter if you didn't have anything not even a base but fuck i went to my my neighbor who play pop and I ask for the bass and I go to the show and play the shit. Like, doesn't matter. Even the guys in the corner who repair radios, they also offer you amplifiers and think, hey, guys, I know you have a rock band. Fuck, we have a good equip- equipment. I mean, it's homemade equipment, but fuck, you are happy with a 200 watts amplifier there. And, ah. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and guys with different, like, uh, musical background i mean mm. it's, it's, it was like kind of a supportive way with the old generation and new generations of uh, the old rockers they really support the new made of metalheads in chile i remember that the old guys the rock guys they, they were always like try to hey guys go, come and open our show and shit like that and uh, as i as you see it's uh, like <coughs> different public sometimes in a uh, in an open theater like just all rock bands and you there like 17 18 years old like people in the fucking audience they did it and the studio was there but they were all happy clapping like moving nice. hands dancing man <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy man the, the similarities are yeah, are yeah, insane yeah. right wow and of course how cool though how always, cool be doing always that, travels man. with police this is this was like a then everyday shit even when you were not in a when you were to school man sometimes you get just stopped by police because they didn't like you walking on the street like then you what do you do you just point your finger and tell them to fuck off you ended up in a police station yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i had this before just when i used to have yeah, it's like people. and they ask oh, what the fuck are you doing me. here i mean yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for the bus to go to school now and you motherfucker you don't go to school you're a fucking criminal like <laughs> i said <laughs> fuck you man yeah yeah man it's, it's crazy yeah we've because it's similar then because we've got the uh, culture police over there like if you're walking yeah. on the we've got different groups of the authorities yeah. And then you've got ones that if you're either a metalhead or even if you're walking down the street holding hands with your girlfriend, they come and arrest you, <laughs> you know, because if you're uh, right. if you don't have a permit to show like if you're married or something yeah. and you're holding hands with a girl okay. who's not related to you, they'll fucking arrest you. They're like, That's haram. you're not supposed to do that. You fucking infidel. Yeah. you know and then they yeah, take yeah. you away and your family gets right. killed and all sorts of stuff right no i i remember how many friends was just took by police just to cut their hairs yeah and oh. that was their obsession and they get happy and beat the shit of you and they throw you out like ha 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 there you are and then the next day you go there with molotov bombs and fucking pulverize this fucking police station nice and then nice. You did you guys actually do that 
Absolutely, man. Fuck yeah. Go on. Nice. <laughs> Was war in both sides, my friend. That's beautiful, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know a guy here. <laughs> he, uh, he, he's a crazy cunt, but I, I love him. He, uh, he was telling me uh, recently that um, he actually uh, set a massive flag with the picture of the supreme leader on fire with a Molotov. And then the whole like authorities were like after him for weeks and, and months afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, it's well, good. Yeah. I like that sense of rebellion, man. It, it's like it, right. I, I live for that. Like right. it, it's, it's such a beautiful thing to me when when people uh, embrace that because it's like. Exactly. It's yeah. like put down the, the idols, as you say, put down this like yes. effigies of lies. That's right. Yeah. There's just, I think some of us, you know, like when you, we always keep, you and I keep coming back to this, but the liberation, I feel like when you discover that there's nothing external that can then no. dictate. No. Anything, and and, and you see then the liberation path is, is there, is yours. You don't yeah. have to be infected by the parasites or, or this like uh, cockroaches who want to just like suck your blood, man or suck your life or, or whatever. I mean, you don't have to follow patterns. I mean, the, the mm. formula is, is unpredictable. I mean, it's no formula. It's you, you will develop yourself in, in the field you are working in, your spirituality, your, your philosophy, and, and, and your, your, even your physical life is like what leads you. I mean, no way to be in stagnation it's like it's, 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 it is liberation the key that's it and in every sense i believe in in every sense you need to like follow liberation and, and, and never forget that no and nothing is as valuable as carving your own path throughout life absolutely. rather than just what's absolutely. being shoved down your throat absolutely absolutely yeah. well brother I have to say, Alvaro, I'm, I'm so fucking yep. glad I asked you to come on this show, man. It's same really here, same cool. here. Thanks a lot. And uh, fuck, we 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 set this meeting for a long time, and finally. Yes, I know. Yeah, I've I've been uh, I've been really looking forward to it for a long I time. I didn't want and, to uh, be in, like in a stress or like with the head in another place. Now and now it's like a yes. calm down day relax preparations for the tour and that's it now finishing some last details with the halpen album yeah and uh, i i will try to send you i will do some mp3s for you to listen the exclusive the album and give me your personal opinion sure after, yeah by after, all after, means, after yeah. this interview i can say then the the album must be called the the, uh, the curse of Quan Yip. Quan Yip is uh, one a very like a mythical, very important person, a shaman from the old times. Then it was like uh, the restorator, the restorator of death in their old traditions, because as they recall in their in their legends before it was immortality. Wow, that's uh, that's fucking great, man! I, I, I'm very much looking forward to this. Uh, do you, any idea when the album might actually be coming out? No idea. I mean, I just got it. I need to set up like the meeting oh, with okay. the label probably tomorrow, and uh, then I will uh, get clear about the release date. And Fantastic, then we have man. to start with the the way to put it out, do some promotions, send send like the promo package here and there. But uh, this, I want to set it at now for the label do that because now i will be out one month in tour i hope in this month the label can do something ahead and uh, when i come back from tour is everything like set it up then i can relax a bit continue with batain until december and then in january i will do some halpen shows in chile and that will be fucking great man this i'm very looking forward to do that Sounds amazing, man. Well, it's cool because that's kind of like your first project uh, in in a while where it's yeah, like creatively exactly. you've got exactly. like the full control. So it's, exactly uh, now, now good. I'm saying that this is my my second uh, thing because Vatain is always the first, mm -hmm. and uh, I think now with then I'm more like 
more in order with my things and time wise and everything i think i can i can put more efforts and more time in helping then uh, that will be the most the, the important thing now for me then i i i live uh, under crop and stand by i mean i don't know if we but it's no plans with the guys like uh, i think uh, we will probably uh, we will think about it and uh, also other other plan i have for the end of the year maybe it's like uh, take my old friends from Execrator and uh, record a new a new album we have been working a bit uh, like in distance during these years and uh, i think uh, that will be a good uh, opportunity to to put there a death black metal album of the old Execrators with the old old with the old guys Fucking we'll awesome! See, man. We'll yeah. see. We did. We cool. did once. Then we thought will be the last thing we will do in 2014. Just record an album when I was in Chile. Yeah. And uh, now during this time, I mean, we get the same crazy idea. Like, and it's not much to think about. I mean, we are not planning to like when to play nothing. It's more like for personal satisfactions. We will try to like uh, self-produce one album, and. Uh, I don't know, so do it our ourselves and uh, take like a, some partner in Chile and release there somehow. I'm pretty far. The guys can take care of it. It's like more or less to have like a. We are talk about this during these years, and it's more or less to to have a, like a, our last chapter. As as we said in 2014, we will do our last chapter. We record an album, and uh, but now I think. Uh, yeah, during all this time and uh, ideas here and ideas there, we already have a, an album there and it's just, they will wait for me. Then I go to Chile and I do my part. And that is also something will be interesting. I'm very looking forward for that. I, I think will be a, will be a good work. That's fucking great, man. I'm glad that you shared that with us here. I mean, you're you're a busy fucking guy. Fair play. Right? I, nice. like I like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I I don't like to be unbusy. <laughs> yeah, unbusy. I like that. <laughs> I've never heard that before, but I like it. Yeah, right. Unbusy. No, I, I have many things to finish, and I have many ideas, and uh, I'm pretty busy. I, I like it. I mean, I, I enjoy it also. I I do everything very as professional as possible with nothing in rush nothing is nothing like halfway for that sometimes i keep it standby for a long time until the sure. the right time show up and then right time and right state of state of mind and a lot of other other accessories then you need to have to 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 work and, and and to end it up with a good and honest work from the soul you know nothing has can be so like uh, in rush or fast or just do do for do it i mean everything has a, has a reason and and the high reason is like very personal i mean you have your answers you have your questions this is your path is is your own path is what you are walking in and uh, you need to do it 100%. I mean, I don't want to be like unbusy. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And I get what you're saying in, in regards to art. Yeah, and, just and, like and, if you and, need and to take the, the time. Yeah, I get it. Older I, I became, I was always thinking that I will be like kind of settled down and like calm. No, but older I became, it's like more movements in this earth, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man! Living yeah, it seems like you're living your life to the fullest extent, and that's great. You know, I'm, I'm, I hope people take a, a listen yeah. from that. Uh, from from the book I of hope Mr. Alvaro the most Leo. of the people like also open a bit the eyes and let the material world aside and uh, and open themselves to the spiritual realms, open themselves to the real magic, the real the real self, to chaos. Mm. It's, it's 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 all around us right? yep. yep yeah i mean and and then people will learn to take the things to appreciate more the ones who does the things in a hundred percent serious way then you then you project and you you let your life in this you know it's like i don't live and i don't look for luxury things and i look for mundane prices 
I'm very satisfied with the spiritual work am I doing during all these years. And as I said, older I became, more busy, <laughs> more busy I am. Yeah, more busy, less unbusy. No, that's a really <laughs> fucking love it. <laughs> Never I'm busy. That's it. And no, next up, good. obviously, next up, you've got the tour, right? Starting this Thursday. Right. Yeah, Wednesday we leave. Yeah, you're Wednesday meeting in leave. Germany, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Because I may or may not have been speaking to Okoye from Bolzer, but yeah, more on that on another time. Cool, cool. But uh, cool. yeah, so and and he he told me that you guys were meeting up in Germany on Wednesday right. and then going right. on Thursday. Yeah, that's right. cool, man. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Awesome. We see us in London. Yep, uh, about two weeks from now, I, right. I will see you in London. Both myself and Sully uh, and our drummer will, will all be there. Great, right at the front. great, great, yeah. great. Should be good, man. Fucking uh, looking forward to finally seeing you all again after. Thanks. Sir. I know we were hanging out at Bloodstock uh, and, and that was really cool. But uh, uh, and then I saw you again in Holland, in, in Nijmegen, um, right. the same year, at the end of your tour with Rotten Christ and Profanatica. But I've been waiting ever since then. To finally see the band so good now good. finally now finally. finally man awesome man well listen i wish you all the best uh, i really same appreciate you. you coming on here uh really really enjoyed the chat and uh same to you yeah man uh, it's been cool as fuck and yeah i wish you all the best for the tour as well i hope it goes uh, smoothly and uh, and that the resistance of the world will be bearable <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks a lot for that my friend and greetings to the guys in the band and oh so, uh, yeah yeah I'll, I'll, we I'll, we continue I'll... talk later on maybe we we can uh, set up some good plans for the future that sounds good to me man sounds right. good to me fuck yeah all right all right, all right. Uh, and obviously as always i do have to say thank you to everyone for listening to the post podcast as well uh hope you guys have enjoyed mine and all of our conversation see you guys well, in the next episode everybody who was listening here hell satan shaitano akbar <laughs>